Down street, man. Like here, Footballville, Caneville. Call it what you want. Call it whatever you want. Let's talk about Cameron Davis, Cameron Harris. Um, I've been asked a lot about Cameron lately. It's his ball. After Lorenzo Lingard took off and went to Florida, Cameron stepped in and he seems to be the number one running back for the University of Miami. Um, and I'm starting to get the questions people asking me, um, is Cameron the number one back? Does he have to split time with somebody? Um, so I forgot to make the video, man. Who is Cameron Davis? Cameron Harris? From my standpoint of view, let you know the, the kid that I know. Um, as far as back and I remember, Cameron, Cam, we call him, played for the Full Lot of Hurricanes. Uh, same park, uh, Stacy Coley came out of, same park, Rooster came out of. It, 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 the list goes on and on. We're talking about the Full Lot of Hurricanes. Um, but the odd thing to me was always that uh, the Fort Lot of Hurricanes was at a Mills Pond Park in Fort Lauderdale. But Cameron, Cameron spent a lot of time in Carroll City and his mom was you football star, bro. Um, big muscular kid, baller, you football. Um, may have some clips we could throw up or something. But yeah, but back to the Carroll City thing, which hints is how he ended up at Carroll City and not Dillard or one of those schools in Fort Lauderdale, I mean, down up north. He ended up at Carroll, Miami, Carroll City. Miami, Carroll City, he went in. Um, highly talented, highly talented, coming straight out of you football. Uh, sophomore. Um, he obviously was going to get more play, but the dilemma was that Naquan Wright was coming in from youth football to Miami, Carroll City. Naquan Wright was one of the most one of those eighth graders, one of those eighth graders that come into high school. I think he had an LSU offer. He had an LSU offer and an uh, Alabama offer, like as an eighth grader. Uh, big time baller. Um, and he was coming straight to varsity. He was Naquan Wright. He was going straight to varsity. And him and Cam was going to have to battle it out for a star position. Cam would be like a, a sophomore. I remember this correctly now. Cam was a sophomore. Naquan was a freshman coming in. And I remember being at the park one day at a strong arm seven on seven trial. And his mom, I know his mom, nice lady, walks up to me. And she was like, what should I do? Um, some people tell me I should transfer him. I could send him somewhere. He could be the man. He didn't got to split carries with nobody. She was confused. I mean, she was confused. She didn't know what to do. And I looked at her and I told her, I said, listen, just let it play out. Just stay there. Just let it play out. Let him stay there. See how it play out. Worst come to worst. I mean, he split carries with one of the best running backs in the nation and he doesn't take much of a, much of a beating. But just let it play out. I mean, in this day and age, we have two running backs, sometimes three running back system. So she, I'm sure she listened to other people too, but that's what I told her. And she, to this day, she still would tell you that's what I told her. So she let it play out. Naquan had a huge freshman year. Um, a huge freshman year. I think he beat Central in 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 the, in at Trash Power on a long, like, 80-yard run in the fourth quarter. Uh, and his career was on the way. And Cameron was, Cameron was splitting carries with him. Um, but Cameron stayed a little dinged up in high school. Um, so after that year, in the summer, it was either the summer or the spring, I went to cover Miami Carroll City. And... Here in Dade County, like, the resources are horrible. Like, the, the fields the kids practice on, a lot of times, a lot of dirt. Uh, they don't have their own stadiums. Things like that in nature. So I went out there, just happened to go out there one summer. There was summer or spring to cover Miami Carey City. Shot some stuff with Naquan. And later that practice, Naquan, I think he was going out for a pass and fell on the ground and he, he was injured. I didn't look into it. I didn't know how serious it was, but um, I don't think he ever played that year. He never came back and played, which made Cameron Cameron the man. 
Naquan had an uh, ankle injury. So Cameron, Cameron Davis at the time became a man. And uh, had a decent season. Decent season. But the one defining point Cameron had under Mr. Arby Hill. Arby Hill was a coach at the time. He was building a, a nasty, well-oiled machine. Cameron, Cameron, Cam, Cameron, I call him Cam all the time. I don't know why I'm calling him Cam. I'm going to call him Cam from him. For the rest of the video, I'm going to call him Cam. The Miami Northwestern game in the rain, I think Cam, uh, Kara City was up, let's say maybe four points or something like that. I think it was maybe a minute 30, a minute left, and, um, You know, Western got the ball at like their own 10 yard line. And I think all they got to do is kind of like run out the clock. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even sure if they had to run the play. Coach Rowe calls a player, a handoff play. The running linebacker gets through the offensive line pretty fast and basically strips the ball out of Cam's hand and go score a touchdown. Oh, uh, uh, I hope we got some video of this. I'll put some video up down there somewhere. Strip the ball out of Cam hand, runs to go score a touchdown. Crowd is crazy, going crazy. It's raining, and Kara City loses on on that play. And of course, it's our answer. We would have had any coin. This would never happen. Yada yada yada. And I, I revert back. I go back. Cam to me has always been a more humble, softer, soft-spoken kid. Uh, looks like an animal of an athlete, but humble, soft-spoken. Kind of reserved kid. When he lost that fumble to lose that game, that bothered me. Uh, later that week, I called Coach Arby Hill and then I told him, "Listen, I say tell Cam this: don't nobody feel worse than him. Stop beating yourself up. You know what I'm saying? Stop beating yourself up because don't nobody feel worse than you." In this world, you do what you can and you do what you can at your best, but you don't owe nobody anything. And I told Arby Hill that. And I told him to tell Cam for me. You don't, basically, you don't owe anybody anything in this world. Like, yeah, people may feel like you let them down, and um, but that's their expectations of you. You didn't ask for that. That's their expectations of you. So you don't, you don't owe, you don't owe anybody anything. Pain is weakness leaving the body. Listen, big rivalry game, Miami Northwest and Kara City, and basically he, he blew it. But what happened next? What happened next was a defining point of, of his career. After that game, I don't know if it matured him. I, I don't know if, if, I'm not sure what happened. But it was the end of the season. They were heading into the playoffs. And Cam started going berserk. He, um, he, 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 he caught a fire in that playoff. And it, it was like something out of a fairy tale. I mean, to go from, from your low, from your lowest low to now, you the man. Now, I remember I remember going to Daytona and he was like unstoppable at Daytona. It's like they couldn't stop him. And and it was like you was watching somebody resurrect out from a grave that they had kind of built for themselves, but he from that point forward was unstoppable. Um in his college career, with almost 1,400 yards in, uh, with 21 touchdowns. Uh, he was ranked top 10 in every in, in every every 247 sports rivals. Ranked him top 10 running back in Florida. Top ESPN top 300. I think he was like number 140. And, and he just ended on a strong note. To this day, I never asked him, but I don't know if that that. Sometimes tragic situations take you to another level. I remember walking to school as an elementary kid and got jumped by my best friends. And that took me to another level mentally. Um, made me understand a couple of things um, about life, about people. 
Um, so maybe that, that tragic situation elevated his mind and, and made him realize, made him refocus. Because he, 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 he was on a tear. So fast forward coming into the University of Miami. I'm going to be honest. My thoughts, I thought that Cameron Davis would, 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 would catch on slow. Like I, I thought he would, I thought he would catch on slow. Let's go back a little bit. Let's go back a little bit. So, so here's the ironic part. Let's go back a little bit. Naquan Wright comes into college to high school football. Highly talented LSU offer, Alabama offer. Naquan Wright breaks his ankle. A lot of colleges back off. Hence why he ended up at Florida. And Cam run. Cam Cam gets handed the ball. This goes all the way back to the same conversation me and mom had like two or three years earlier. And I told her just to let him stay. So so this so so that's how that's how this stuff this stuff isn't guaranteed. That's how it shakes out a lot of times. So Naquan sits out his junior year. Um and it's Cam Ball. And he stepped up and he did his thing. So coming into college, I thought that. Cam would struggle at first and eventually be a late bloomer because I knew how he was. He was a humble kid. He was reserved. You know what I'm saying? Um, he always had a work ethic, but he was he was humble. He was reserved. He's not like one of them dogs. He's not Naquan. He's not like Naquan. I compared the two because they played together. But Naquan is like a go getter. Like he'll walk around the camp and he'll challenge people and do all these things. Cam was kind of reserved, laid back. So I thought he would eventually. It would take him some time to catch on, man. But I kind of underestimated his raw talent and, and who he was. I can't lie. Because the second half of his freshman year at Miami, uh, he balled out. And he's been balling out ever since. Um, so, he... Comes into the press conference um, last week, and he has a look on his face that I never seen before. Man, he's locked in, like like he's locked in. He's 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 focused. Somebody had to sit him down, and told him, "Listen, man, it's winter season time. It's time to eat. It's on you." Because dog is locked in. He's ready to be a leader, and I had never saw him focused and locked in like that. Um, to the point where I always meant to ask him, like, "Hey, what's going on?" Um, so to the questions that people ask me, like, Cam, can Cam be the number one back? Can he hold it down himself? I mean, he proved me wrong once or twice. And at this point, I'm riding with him. He, he seemed to have matured. He seemed to understand what's going on in front of him. He, he seemed to be able to, he, he seemed to be ready to take that leadership role on that team. I don't know if last year's done still some power in him, but he seems to be ready. And I think he's ready, bro. I saw it in his eyes at that press conference. So, man, listen, that's my version. My story of who Cam is.